Good morning. Good morning. Wonderful. It's so good to see you. It's actually hard for me to see you because that light is right in my face, but I trust you're all out there. And as we start, uh, well, first of all, welcome. I'm so happy to see all of you here at our first chapel of this semester. I know it's going to be a good time for all of us. I think some people are still kind of filtering in, and, and you, you do kind of look a little bit like the Red Sea here uh, in, in the middle of partying. So if, if, if as we start you know, worshiping together, if you might squeeze a little bit towards the middle, that might be helpful in, to provide some hospitality to those who are still making the long, arduous trek over here to the Culture and Arts Center. Uh, well, it's wonderful to be here with you. Uh, my name is, Br thank you, look at that, look at that response. <laughs> Uh, I'm Brian Davis. I get to serve as campus chaplain, and we, you know, meet here every Wednesday at 10 for chapel to, to sing together and to hear God's word uh, and, and and be together as a community. I'm glad you made your way over. Um, with I, I'm going to turn it over to our worship team in a second. So I, I, I invite you to stand uh, as we get started, and uh, we'll worship together. We, we'll hear from our new president, uh, and we'll get going this morning. So. As we get started this morning, um, please join me in this prayer. Our uh, good God, uh, we come to worship you today. We come to sing, uh, to pray, and to listen. You always hear us. Now help us hear you in this moment. We pray that uh, we, we we pray for the beginning of our school year, uh, for all the new students that you've brought to this place, for our new faculty that you would be with us. Uh, we know that you promised to be with us to the very end of the age. And as we sing together, uh, I pray that we sense your spirit with us now. I pray all this in the name of Christ. Amen. Let's, let's worship together. Amen. Um, as we begin this, I'd like to read a quick passage in Psalms 100. Three, verses 1 through 4. So just reflect on these words. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. So as we sing these songs, as we hear the word that was prepared for us, let's just reflect on those words.
beautiful new building that out of your grace you have entrusted us to use for your glory as your creativity is expressed through the God-given gifts of the FPU community. We lift up Dr. Stevens as he brings us the word this morning and pray that you would speak through him. Thank you for the blessing that he and his wife Beth have already been to this community for the short time that they have been with us. This morning, we are thankful for your grace and for the sacrifice that you made on behalf of us all, though we did not deserve it. In your presence, we confess our sinfulness, our shortcomings, and our offenses against you. You alone know how often we have sinned in wandering from your ways, in wasting your gifts, and forgetting your love. Have mercy on us, O oh Lord. Forgive our sins and help us to live in your light and walk in your ways for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Well, before you take a seat, <laughs> sorry, uh, can we give a hand to the worship team for, for leading us this morning? Thank you, worship team, um, for leading us. I appreciate it very much. Um, yeah, please remain standing for uh, the reading of our scripture this morning, taken from Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Listen to the word of the Lord. And it says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the, clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Of its own. Well, this is God's word. You may be seated. We're I thought the worship team was still there. I'm going to tell them that they could see, sit down too. Well, this morning we're so excited and blessed to have uh, our, our first chapel speaker, uh, Dr. Andre Stevens, who was selected by our board uh, this past May to be our new university president. Uh, he's been at Fresno Pacific, I believe, for two months exactly today, I think. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So Dr. Stevens has worked in uh, Christian higher ed for over 30 years, uh, most recently serving at an institution down in Southern California uh, where he worked in enrollment management and uh, most recently as the vice president of student development. Uh, he has a BA and an MA in the field of communications. Um, I'm also a BA in communications, so uh, good shout out to the comrades. Uh, out there, uh, and he has a PhD in education from Claremont Graduate University. Uh, I'm so excited to uh, welcome him here this morning to bring God's word to uh, Sunbird. Would you give uh, just a warm welcome to Dr. Andre? <laughs> good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the first chapel. Am I on? I'm good. Yeah. yeah okay. Good. 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 So, um, yeah, students. How many of you have first? First time new students, raise your hands, let's see. Yeah, welcome, we want to welcome I, I have shared with students, I, I started July 1, so it has been two months. Looking out the window of my office, I, I saw birds and squirrels uh, for most of those two months until just a week or two ago, I saw human beings, and that, I, I was just jazzed about that. I love uh, students, uh, we are here for you. And for those of you who are you. I, I just want to say welcome to uh, Fresno Pacific. Um, we're glad that you're here. I uh, My life was changed in a chapel service at a school, yeah, just south of here, uh, my freshman year. And so my prayer this morning is that you here 
uh, the word of God spoken through me, um, that your hearts are being formed and transformed by the spirit of God working in this place. Um, and I pray too for the women and men who will stand here uh, in the subsequent weeks that, yeah, your hearts will be drawn to him. The word of God is living and active and it will um, nourish your souls. And so the scripture was read this morning, and I one of the scriptures I memorized as a college student was 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, and it says all scripture is inspired by God. All scripture is inspired by God, or God breathed. And it is, in, in the King James, it says it's profitable, but here I'm reading from, uh, I think it's New Living Translation, it is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong goes on to say it corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. And I'm going to try to turn on the light under here because I can't see the, see the writing. Um, well, I guess that's not working. Uh, another donation for a little light under here. That would be good. So, timer on too because um, they gave me like 18 minutes so I'm not going to go back on that I don't know I already started <laughs> maybe it's 20 now um, yeah so I, I want to share a few reflections um, on this passage that Pastor Brian just read the scripture is deep right there's the, in, in 18 minutes I can't fully unpack and no one can uh, what God is speaking through the scripture it's deep it's mysterious and it, like I said it's lovely loving um, to us. It, it forms and transforms our heart. But I'm just going to give you uh, three things that stuck out to me and then maybe a little way of kingdom living mm -hmm. uh, because I think that's what um, this passage is, is getting at here is king, kingdom living. And so the first thing I want to say to you tonight is that if there is a kingdom, we must establish first that there is a king. Mm -hmm. And so I know uh, some of us think that um, we're just pursuing kingdom living uh, without a king. Uh, but I want to say that we, we must first establish that there is uh, a king. Uh, you, can't, you cannot have a kingdom without a king. And there are many things that people seek to rule uh, their lives, whether it's people or things. And if we're, I, I think if we're honest, uh, we have the temptation to set ourselves up as sovereign, right? That we set ourselves up in our own little and so, but the, the Bible says, <laughs> the Bible says there is just but one king. So Psalm 24 says that the earth is the Lord's and all it contains, the world and all who live in it. And Psalm 103, 19 says, God has set his throne in heaven. He rules over us all. He is a king. And Colossians 1, 15 says, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before everything, or excuse me, before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. So though there, there are earthly kings, uh, again, we serve a king of kings. And contrary to what some people think, the throne is not vacant. Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father, and the earth is his footstool. So again, number one, if there's a kingdom, we must establish first that there is a king. Secondly, the kingdom was initiated or inaugurated uh, when Jesus came to this earth. It is not just a future hope, but the kingdom is actually a present reality. And it reminds me a little bit, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to digress, and this is probably for the theologians, professors in the room, I apologize because this is not a good analogy. But when I was a kid, there's this candy that I liked. It was called Now and Later. Did anyone ever heard that? Now and Later? It actually, I looked it up, it's like 60 years old, actually, this year. But it's like a taffy kind of candy. I used to like the apple flavor and watermelon flavor. But 
it's now and later, right? You enjoy it now and you want some more later. I get horrible analogy to the kingdom of God. <laughs> I failed. Uh, but let me tell you, the kingdom is, again, not only a future hope but a present reality. Again, most theologians would say when Jesus stepped on this earth, he inaugurated or established uh, the heavenly and earthly kingdom that he will come and reclaim. They say uh, it's the already but not yet kingdom. Jesus himself spoke about that. He said, repent and be saved for the kingdom is now at hand. The good news of the kingdom was proclaimed by even John the Baptist, right? And he announced that as Jesus was here. So um, one, we have to establish that uh, there is a king. Uh, two, And then thirdly, the kingdom has impl implications for us now. The kingdom has implications for us now. Jesus taught his disciples to pray in what is commonly known as the Lord's Prayer. He said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the kingdom is in our hearts. His rule is through his people, and his reign is redemptive. His reign is redemptive. He's reclaiming creation. One author puts it this way, quote, Ever since sin entered the world, God's kingdom project has at its heart a rescue mission for rebellious sinners, drawing them into his renewing work. The Bible is a rescue story, not about God rescuing sinners from a broken creation, but about him rescuing them for a new creation, for a new creation. So, so yeah, heaven is coming down to earth. There, there will be a new creation where he will rule in not only in our hearts, but in a place. And so there is a king. The kingdom was initiated when Jesus came, and the kingdom has in, in kingdom living has implications for us, uh, for us now. Now, some people think, um, I remember in high school I had a friend, uh, we'll call him Fred, we were talking one day about heaven and about God's kingdom. And he said, Andre, I don't want to be, I don't want to be in heaven sitting on a cloud playing a harp. I'd rather be kicking it in hell with Van Halen. Can you say hell there? Yeah, that's okay, okay. Yeah, it's in the context, the biblical context. Um, and, uh, and I, I don't know much about what heaven's going to be like. I mean, I think we have hopes. I think the Bible gives us some clues. We certainly know that God will, um, he will reign. He will be present with us. Um, yeah, but this, this was a, it was an interesting, I was like probably 18 or 19 when he said this to me. And so it's just a different, it's just like, is that what, is that what heaven is? Is that what the kingdom, living the future kingdom is? Is going to be just sitting on a harp, uh, uh, playing a harp? Sitting in a harp would be also kind of, that would be hell probably. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so so there there's this implication of then how should we live now? So Fred's view of, of living now actually didn't matter. He felt like, you know what, I'd rather be someplace else than have this future hope of a present. And so let me, let me just pause here and say, um, again, to, to have kingdom living, we have to have, I, I believe, relationship with the king. And so my question for you this morning is, what is your relationship with the king? What is your understanding of the king? When I was in college, um, and growing up through high school, and I got to my freshman year in college, my relationship with the king was one of fear. I felt like the king, God, he was there to just um, punish me anytime I did something wrong. And so I, I lived like that. I lived, in, I lived in fear and I lived in worry, especially from my earthly dad, um, because I think I, I thought he was, he, was, he was an angry person and he was just going to beat me anytime I did something wrong. And that kind of translated into my, my view of God. 
what is your relationship with the king? <laughs> Time is for Nithian to tell you about our king and all that he is to us and for us. But I can tell you this, he loves you deeply. Mm -hmm. I can tell you this, when your feet hit the floor this morning, mm -hmm. I've got his delight. So, um, Jesus in this passage says there are things that are barriers to living kingdom life. Worry is one of those. <laughs> Our lives are being choked out by anxiety and fear and worries. In fact, if you read anything about college students particularly, uh, the levels of anxiety and sadness and loneliness says, if God gives such, well, God says this, Eugene just translated it, um, if God gives such attention to the appearance of wildflowers, most of which are never even seen, don't you think he'll attend to you? Take pride in you. Do his best for you. What I'm trying to do here is to get you to realize, excuse me, get you to relax to not be so preoccupied with getting so that you can respond to God's giving. People, people who don't know God and the way he works fuss over these things, but you know both God and how he works. Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provision. Don't worry about missing out. You will find all your everyday certainly have this vertical relationship with God and horizontal relationship with each other, this cross-shaped um, relationships. And so the question um, that I'm asking today, how do we live, how should we live in the already but not yet kingdom, the kingdom that is present and the kingdom that's come? But how do we live today? I think Matthew 25 uh, is instructive for us in this. And so let me read When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at his right hand. sick and you cared for me. I was
was in prison and you took it into your hands. Then these righteous ones, these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? Or a stranger and show you hospitality? Or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, salvation. Um, Ephesians 2, 8, uh, 9, 10 say that. Our faith is by grace through faith. Um, but it is evidence of the changes that are within us. It's a demonstration of living in the already part of the kingdom. And again, listen to these words. The king, the king will say to those then he says, these righteous ones, he calls us righteous ones, but in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, mm -hmm. and now we are being called righteous ones, mm -hmm. right? So his righteousness has been imparted to us through calling Father. Mike Mason says love requires getting mixed up with people. Love requires getting mixed up with people. We're going to spend a lot of our lives mixed up anyway. Why not do it together? So the hungry, the naked, the poor, the in prison. Love requires us to spend a lot of time with mixed up people. He goes on to say, one night in 1997, this is he and his family, I'm quoting now, I drove my family to a dark place in the country to view the comet Haleybaugh, the most impressive comet of his lifetime at that point. As it happened the same night, there was a partial eclipse of the moon. So there we stood on a deserted road, gazing up at the heavens. Oh, time or, no, I'm going I'm to keep going. Sorry. Yeah. I'm all, I'm all. Yeah, there we stood gazing up at the heavens in wonder. What a phenomenal display. Even so, I found myself looking at my family huddled around me and thinking that the real show was here on earth. We ourselves are the comets. We are the moon and the stars. We are the fireworks in the darkened universe. And so this is what he said, and maybe the quote is up here. It says, to be 
be in the presence of the meanest, lowest, most repulsive specimen of humanity is still to be closer to God than when looking up into a starry sky or at a beautiful sunset. For we, excuse me, for we cannot really love a sunset. We can only love a person. God is love, and in coming to him, we cannot escape coming to people. There is no separation between the spiritual and the social. The way we feel about people, the way we feel about people is the way we feel about God. And the way we treat people is the way we treat God. Every person we meet is God's representative to us. And so, my friends, as we, as we kick this year off mm -hmm. and we think about what it means and what it looks like to um, pursue his kingdom, first, there is a king. We have to acknowledge that. Second, the kingdom has been initiated and, or inaugurated on this earth. And thirdly, and thirdly, there's implications for us now in the already but not yet. And I think the already is leaning into those who may not look like us, vote like us, think like us, the needy, and we lean into that in ways that reflect this Matthew 25, where Jesus says, the king, the king says, these righteous ones, these righteous ones will inherit the kingdom that has already been prepared to them before the creation of the world. Let me pray for us. God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word. I pray uh, through your spirit uh, that you would move in our hearts to form us and transform us into people who know you, love you, and who make you known. And Lord, would you give us eyes to see and ears to hear those things you want us to see and hear and do for your kingdom purposes, God. We acknowledge our own shortcomings. We acknowledge that we set ourselves up as sovereigns. And Lord, we humbly ask that you would, you would give, create in us a clean heart, God, and renew a right spirit in us. We need you, God. As we leave this place, God,
special place. Like what the president was saying, Matthew 25, 34 says, and the king will turn to those on his right and say, you have a special place in my father's heart. Come and experience the full inheritance of that kingdom realm that has been destined for you from before the foundation of the world. We thank you, God. And we thank you for this word and for this worship. In the name of Jesus, we say, amen. Thank you, Shalom, for leading us for the worship team. Is this, is this back on or not? All right. Hello. Hello. Oh, we're good. Okay. Thank you, Shalom, for leading us. Give them a hand again. Thanks so much. Thank you, Dr. Stevens, for leading us uh, and, and, and teaching us. I learned that the kingdom of heaven is like yeast, as Jesus says, is like a mustard seed and is now like a now and later as well. So I appreciate that. A couple uh, announcements before we get you out of here. Um, make sure to mark on your calendars 10 a.m. on Friday in our special events center, also known as the gym. We have our uh, university convocation. It's kind of like our official kickoff to the academic year. Have a real special time actually on Friday, especially of welcoming in our new freshmen into this uh, academic community. So come to that. Um, I think there was, real quickly too, there were, I think there was some problems with the app, the I attended app when you uh, were using it to sign in uh, this morning. Um, there was a problem if you put in your FPU email address, it wasn't kicking you an email to sign up for the app. Feel free to put your personal one in there and it kind of, you can sign up that way and then go back into the settings later and put your, um, your FPU one in there. So sorry, sorry for the confusion there. Um, also, um, real quickly, we want you to, to there's, a, there's a QR code, we want you to, to, to know the songs that we are singing this semester uh, and year in chapel. Uh, feel free to scan that code back there and that'll take you straight to a Spotify playlist which will be populated with all the songs that we're singing. So uh, thank you Shalom for putting that list together and, and putting some care into that. Uh, that's it. On, on the way out, we do have some light snacks and beverages for you, so if you don't really need to uh, scurry off to your next class, please feel free to grab something um, on, and, and talk to somebody that you maybe are, could catch up with or you don't know. But other than that, please hear these words now as we close. Grant us, Lord, the vision of your kingdom. Give us forgiveness and new life and the stirring of your spirit, so that we may share your vision, proclaim your love, and change this world in the name of Christ. Amen. You are dismissed.